Hey guys, HW. We're down at York Street in the city. I've decided to come back to the city today. Haven't done a city run for a while. There's a fair few people about. I've also got a new microphone. I've decided to purchase the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphone. So hopefully that's gonna fix a few issues in regards to um, overheating, um, draining of the battery, all the rest of it. And ho hopefully my sounds a bit better as well. So we're just in the park at the moment. I'll just switch my camera around in a minute. We're just at the park outside Wynyard Station. And I'm just having a look at this beautiful AWA tower here, which is very old school. So yeah, I'm just gonna walk around today and uh, hopefully get some nice shots of, of the city. And I might just stop here just quickly and uh, switch off the front screen of the camera because people seem to be a bit, um, a bit shy. So let me do that first. All right, let's get back into it. Should see a fair few people around this time that I'm walking through the city because it's a Friday lunchtime and there's plenty of people out having their lunch in between work shifts and uh, people you know hitting the uh, pub which is a tradition on a Friday for workers in Sydney and probably around the rest of the world as well but I dare say they're probably not as keen as Aussies are during the work week to hit the booze on a Friday afternoon. If you haven't been to city, be city before or Sydney before and you haven't been into the city for a while, um, on the corner here, in the corner here there used to be a um, 7-Eleven like and then previous to that it was like a Krispy Kreme Donuts shop and this joint on the corner here called Batch that used to be a pie shop I'm trying to think of the pie chain that it was um, it had the it was a pie shop with the smiley face um, oh, I just can't think of it. It's a pretty famous um, pie, pie shop chain around Sydney as well. Ah, I got it. I, I got it myself by saying face. It was called Pie Face. So a few places have gone during the Great Disruption. Oh, this is reverted back to a cafe restaurant. It's three beans now. It used to be um, it used to be a favourite coffee roaster of mine. Um, trying to think of the name of it. My brain's not working today. People lining up outside the Bavarian beer, beer cafe. Smash a few pints. And have some have themselves a chicken schnitzel or something or a venal schnitzel, ven, veal schnitzel. There's a CBD hotel there. That's a pretty uh, pretty busy joint on Friday afternoons and Friday nights. I wonder what happened to the Forbes Hotel. Does anybody know? It's all boarded up. Don't know whether it's being renovated or whether it's been sold and it's going to turn into apartment blocks or what, but have a look at it. That used to be always open on a Friday after Friday afternoon as well. It was open every day because it was a pub. 
But have a look at it, it's all boarded up. That's an awesome hotel to go to for drinks and lunch. Let's see if we can see inside the window here. Ah, uh, they got blackout curtains on it. It's a lot delightful cement mixer not. Didn't enjoy that. Oh, there's industry beans in there. That's a delightful coffee shop. I'll come back to that later. See if I can get myself a nectar. So I might just keep rolling the camera for now as we head down some of these city streets. And then uh, just let, let the camera inevitably overheat and shut down and then I'll have my nectar then. Passed by that sourdough joint, which I filmed in another video, so I won't film it again. It's a bit too much free advertising, I think. One of the things I want to do when I walk down here is have a bit of a goosey goosey gander at this building on the corner down here to see if the Japanese joint that I used to go to all the time for my chicken katsu curry still there I've got the I've got my settings dialed down to 50 megahertz today Which will hopefully allow me to get inside Indoors some of the places and not have that annoying LED flickering now, I've always been aware of that but I prefer to shoot in 60 frames per second, so I leave it at 60. But today, seeing that I'm going to be darting in and out of different places, I thought best to dial it down to 50. And um, hopefully my editing program, which seems to prefer 30 frames and 60 frames, hopefully on auto, it does an okay job editing it. Yes, look at the green light. Here we go. There's the Queen Victoria building over there. The beautiful Queen Vic. So much construction going on around the city. I don't, I don't get it. If you don't have any, if you don't have many people coming into the office. I would hope you're probably maybe cons building them, rebuilding them as apartment blocks rather than office towers. Well, we'll see what happens. All right, here we go, we're going into this arcade to see if the Japanese joint's still here. So, this is on the corner of York Street and Market Street. Yeah, I can see the sign. Looks like it's still there. Yes, still there, beautiful. Oh look, there's my favorite, chicken katsu curry. Not many people in there yet. Let's see if we can get down these stairs, they're pretty steep. Hope I don't trip over.
a nice looking bike there. I assume it's a Triumph because it's got it written on the petrol tank. But you never know what these people are going to do. Could paint anything on the petrol tank, but I assume it's a Triumph. It's a nice looking bike. It's Mullen Street, you'd think it'd be better off being called Mullins Lane, wouldn't you? There's nothing up there. So this is Clarence Street. It's a bit of a quiet one, this one mainly just traffic not many people seem to traverse through Clarence Street for some reason and here's Hotel Sweeney's there used to be a Thai restaurant oh it still is there's still a Thai restaurant up there I used to come to a Thai restaurant up there at lunchtime but it's a lot right, let's head up here back into the get back into the city Market Road, another laneway in Sydney, one of the many. Just so much construction going on. They're still, still obviously rebuilding the the Woolworths building over there on the corner. See all the green screening up. Back outside the Queen Victoria building. Uh, Cross against the lights here, can't be bothered waiting. Oh, that's good to see. That cafe on the corner's back open. That was closed for a long time. We should go there quite often as well. There we go, another green light. I'm dominating today. Now we just crossed over George Street. And we're about to head up. Um, I don't know what street this is now. <laughs> Forgot it. Oh no. There's Harry Bushes down there making a lot of racket. I don't want to go down there. I'll cross over here. Why can't I remember what street this is? Bizarre. Brain's really not working today. Uh, what street is it? Sure, it shows you how long it's been since I've been into the city, but I can't even remember the main streets. Ah, that's what it is. I think it's Park Street. Rappos. He must be a good guy, that guy with the Rappos jacket on. Yeah, Park Street. HW's lost it. Should we head down Pitt Street? 
or should we head down Elizabeth Street? Let's head down Pitt Street, where we get some more action that way. Although I'd prefer to walk down Elizabeth Street, but... Now, yeah, got to stay on this side to stay out of the sun. Oh, that's a Hungry Jack's now. There used to be a McDonald's there. And this used to just be part of this building here, but they've turned it into a Hungry Jack's. Which is Burger King for you folks overseas. It's just got a different name in Australia. So they're sneaky. McDonald's would be annoyed about that. Oh, that, by the way, that's the Art House Hotel in there. It's another old building that's been turned into a hotel. Just a standard hotel. Dark, somewhere to booze, play a bit of music, enjoy the company you're with. All right, let's get through the galleries of Victoria just to have a PK. Eh? Because I want to see if my if another restaurant that I used to gorge at is still here. Which is this one just here? Although it looks like it's changed owners. What's it do now? Oh, it's a cafe and pancakes. It used to be a, it used to be a, a Malaysian Chinese restaurant. It's a shame. Oh yeah, there's plenty of cafes and food in here. There used to be a Japanese bookstore up the top there. I don't know whether it's still there or not. Probably is. Now here's the grounds. You come on certain days, you've got to line up and to get in here and if not have a booking uh oh I can hear the drums again let's go jeez where do we go down here oh no how do I get away from them i walk a bit faster Check the camera back here oh I can sneak through here this is the entrance to the Hilton Hotel, by the way. The Sydney's Hilton Hotel. Couple of Porsches there. Yeah, please stop singing. Don't come in here. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So make a racket. A bit of work in between calls, that guy. Maybe waiting for his flight back home and just waiting for his hotel transfer, or maybe he's just got in. Some work to do on the weekend. So, escape the Hilton Hotel there. Oh, look out, hang on. There's a lot of action over here. It looks like there might be a uh, protest today. Yeah. Looks like there's going to be a builder's protest today. Just getting ready to form their 
their lines and probably head up to Parliament House and start the protest. Or maybe they've just finished. I don't know. Traditionally, this part of Pitt Street here has always had shoe stores and men's menswear. Even that um, uh, Piccadilly Arcade over there, that's always had a lot of men's stores in it. So traditionally all of the, uh, the female clothing outlets and shoes were all in the, the centre down there, down in Pitt Street Mall and um, in Market Street. Um, David Jones and Grace Brothers, now Maya was uh, the main purveyor of clothing and accessories to the ladies. Now let's cross over the road here. Knowing my luck, as I'm filming down one of these other streets, the, that builders protest will come past me and make a bunch of racket. These Rolex. Just wonder, I filmed this in one of my other videos, but the actual watches are out on display now, which is nice. Anyone lined up in there? Oh, there's someone sitting at the table, thinking about a timepiece. There's another, looks like a ladies' watch there. So there's even a bit of security on the door of Seiko over there. Tag hair on the, on the corner. Oh, he's biting. Oh, we've got to capture some of this. I love this watch. Look at that. It's my fault. Yeah. Take any of those ones. The surfy ones. Oh, nice one. That lady's waiting for her appointment to start. This is the, the men's side of David Jones, but a lot of, there was a lot of female boutiques up the top of the store. I don't know whether they're gonna keep it like that or just revert back to just having male on this side and female on the other side. Back in the day, I used to have to uh, come in there to buy business shirts, which was a, which is both expensive and a pain in the neck. Oh, let's have a quick look past David Jones and see if we can capture some of the windows. What's this John? Van Cleef. Never heard of it. It's obviously an exclusive jewellery store for this. It's a nice ensemble. So it's got a bit of turquoise in it. Some diamonds and different gold. Nice watches. And we've got Fendi in the corner here. They're right for looking bad. So it's a fake fur. It's an awful. Let's cross the road before that security guard gives me raspberries. Oh, look at David Jones. David Jones into just advertising the big brands now. Mont Blanc, Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. How are you going, buddy? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Good, man. There's Louis Vuitton. I have seen you on the like, Have you? I haven't been to Stratford. You're telling a fib. Uh, 
Oh yeah, let's go this way. We'll film some more of these exclusive retail outlets. You see, you know, they need all the advertising they can get, right? Ha ha ha! And every day they've got tourist buses lined up to hoover up all this stuff. There's Prada over there. Now we're in Castle Ray Street now. Oh, look at that, that's a nice view. There's Centre Point Tower up there. Now this cheeky building on the corner here, this nice looking shiny building, this is the JP Morgan building. There's a coffee shop up the top there that I used to go to. It might be an option today. Am I gonna get, a, get across here or what? Again, Friday lunchtime. All the office workers are getting around and hitting their lunch spots. Oh, this guy's lined up for the Prada. Gave me the thumbs up. Look at that outfit. Would you go that? Look at those shoes. It's a nice outfit. James's Arcade, we've never been in there. Should we go in there? Ah, oh, stuff that, let's go in there. So I've never been in there. Let's see what's in there. It's like, oh look, Patrick Philippe. Patek Philippe. Uh, I, mean, I can't remember how you say that, but that's that famous watch brand. Yeah, a few Jewish stores. They'll definitely not like me filming. So let's get out of here. Jewelry shops hate getting getting their windows filmed by the way. They try to avoid it if you can. Just gonna kind of come out and yell at you anyway. the road there's Sydney's actual Mont Blanc store there and there's Cartier over there security goon at the door Appointment only, I'd say. There's Dior, another security goon. There's Dior. And there's people lined up for that. Look at that. Can't wait to get in there. There's Hermes over there. There's people lined up for that as well. Chanel. All right, let's get down King Street. It's a bit more Dior action for you then. Oh, I can't think of her name. But um, as an actor, I like her. She goes all right. She's in the, most recently in the Spider-Man Spider film, but I liked her in, um, I liked her in The Greatest Showman. She was mad in that. Getting held up on all these cars getting to the parking lot. Entrance to H&M in there. 
That used to be an entire arcade in there. I can't remember what it was called. But um, H&M took over the whole lot. Oh, and the door code. There's a Theatre Royal over there. The last time I saw a, a theatre production in there was... Um, uh, what was it called? It was that one... It was that one the there was a movie made of it where the the Harry Potter star um, Daniel Radcliffe played in it um, in the movie. But I saw the actual play here with John Waters, where it was only like there was only a couple of people in the production, and it was based on that ghost story. Um, I think it was called The Black Widow or something like that. But it was it was, it was awesome. Apart from hearing the trains uh, heading into Martin Place underneath. Every time a train would come through, the floor would shake underneath for the subway. So that was a bit annoying, but um, the actual production itself was awesome. Uh, this is back onto Pitt Street. I'll tell you what, can't read, but it looks like we've been going for half an hour. And one, the camera hasn't shut itself. And two, the, um, the battery's been doing quite well this, in addition. So, pretty happy about that. But regardless, when I get down to um, the corner down here of George Street and King Street, I think I'm going to switch off because I need to use the restroom and uh, I need to find a uh, coffee. I might sneak into the old Telstra building to go to the toilet. So let's switch off here. Uh, let's get going again. Use the restroom at the big T. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Oh, there's a belly there. They're open for business. Let's sneak through here. This used to be a Coles on the corner just here. Now it's an IGA. Said my bag there, apologies for that. Wow, this has all changed. Let's go out onto the tram tracks here, stand in the middle. But on the corner here, on the corner just here, there used to be a cafe, and then underneath it was Coles. And now they've built this tunnel, and uh, underneath the IGA now. But I might head down George Street, head into Wynyard Station and go through the tunnel to Barangaroo because I haven't filmed that before. And let's do it today. Look at the beautiful blue sky up there, by the way. Let's get in front of this tram. Get on the other side. It's off to Ranwick. If you haven't been to Sydney before, Ramwick is where there's a couple of things at Ramwick. There's a university that extends from Ramwick down to Kensington, that's New South Wales Uni. Uh, there's Prince of Wales Hospital at Ramwick. 
and there's Ramwick Racecourse. They're all the biggest races in Sydney, and some people would argue now biggest in Australia happen at Ramwick Racecourse. This um this actually I might be wrong. Um, no, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure where this Hong Kong bank is. I'm pretty sure that used to be a hotel in there. Where you could go boozing at lunchtime or of an evening. So it's gone. Put down in the comments if you remember what that hotel on the corner of Wynyard Street used to be called. Because I can't remember what it was. few people hanging around Bar Toddy over there. Yes, to be there. Trying some lunch. What time is it? 20 to 2. So, still very much a slow Friday lunch being had over there. People hanging outside that coffee joint there. I haven't had a coffee there before. Oh, look at this. Mate, look at Jimmy's falafel. Absolutely killing it. Look at it. Dominating. People lined up out the door to get the falafel. Oh, let's have a quick walk through the Hunter Connection. It's another cheeky arcade in Sydney. It's full of Asian joints. You can get Vietnamese in there and Thai and all the rest of it. Let's get in there and have a quick squeeze. A bit late, so they're probably not. They might not all be open. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, still a few open. Yeah. Taste of Beijing. Korean kitchen there. There's a few joints over there. It's this it's Indian Indian restaurant. Vietnamese rolls there. Delicious. This place on the corner I used to go to. I used to get my uh, Vietnamese rolls in there. I used to love the uh, the Vietnamese pork rolls that they used to do. The barbecue pork. Hey, here's a cheeky way that you can get into Winnie. You can go down these escalators and sneak through a tunnel into Winyard. So let's do that. It's another Spice Boys. Another restaurant. Shop there. There's a sneaky tunnel that will take us into Winyard. The dental practice. There's a few shops open back up in this arcade. So again, this is part of the Hunter Street connection. There used to be a currency store in here as well that sold currency for collectors. Seems to be gone. Mm -hmm. 
Let's destroy. Oh, Papa Rich. Get into it. This has changed around a bit. I'm a bit lost, to be honest. I thought this was going to take me into Winyard Station, but it seems to be taking me somewhere else. See if we where we end up. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's Winyard Station. Now we're going to take the other tunnel that goes into uh, Barangaroo. McDonald's dominating at lunchtime. People getting a burger and fries before hopping on the train, or maybe they've just hopped off for the train and they're on the way to a meeting. There's a Japanese sushi roll joint there. Florist. Alright, now we're starting to get into the tunnel that takes you through to Barangaroo. Let's get into it. I have actually walked through here before, uh, not on camera, but I've walked through here before when it was still being completed. It was open, but there was still a lot of construction around. So, well, there used to be a hotel down there. I wonder if it's still there. There used to be a little tavern. Uh, it looks like it's gone. Probably a bit, a bit dark in here on the camera. I don't know. So I'm probably making noise on the microphone. I'm just checking to see if it's still stuck on. There you go. It's a life a little escalator that I'm walking down to get through to Barangaroo. I'd like to, I think I'd like to ride a skateboard along here, along this pattern. That would be entertaining. So yeah, um, people that used to live in Sydney or people that have been here before, they know that there was a tunnel that runs under the, under the Queen Victoria building from Town Hall through to um, where Meyer is now, which was once called Grace Brothers. But now with tunnels like this, like Barangaroo and obviously the Hunter Street connection that we came through as well, there's still plenty of places that you can stay out of the rain in Sydney to traverse between the different office buildings. So this is just an extra addition to that and uh, quite pleasant thinking that you can get from, you know, you can pretty much get from Wynyard Station all the way over to here, which is, you know, Sussex Street and Kent Street without getting wet. I'll walk up here. See how we go. Oh, here we are. We're in Barangaroo. That's the Westpac Tower there. Got a mate that works for Westpac. Although he mainly works from home these days. So let's get across this. Ooh, should we go down these ye old stairs that way or should we go over the bridge? Ah, let's go over the bridge.
getting lots of hellos as I walk along the street here today. Everybody wants to get themselves on the camera. I don't know what that joint is over there. Some sort of cafe. There's heaps of nice um, coffee shops and restaurants in Barangaroo. So a lot of the uh, a lot of the Sydney siders get down here, at, especially on a Friday afternoon, lunch, get into the booze and smash a lunch of cheap lunch maybe sometimes, but around here probably more expensive restaurants. Oh, there's a little bookstore and music store in there. It's interesting. Last time I walked past here, my microphone screwed up and I had to cut all the audio out. I was actually walking down the King Street Wharf over there, or between Barangaroo and King Street Wharf. So today, hopefully we'll capture a bit more action with audio. There's the, uh, the tower of Barangaroo over there. thinking what I should do. Should I go down there and then come back here? We'll head down that way and then we'll come back. There's people enjoying a cheeky lunch in there. store over there looks all right ramen bar does everyone like their ramen some place called old town never heard of it but it's pretty packed some place called the canteen I don't know what the go is there it's a coffee shop. Oh, they got pasta as well. There you go. It's like a bunch of construction workers down here having their lunch. Oh, this is a bit of a food court area in here, look. That's the canteen. That's a V canteen. With all the different options. Now, how are we going to avoid the sun here? I've got to tilt the camera this way. Pick like two to three lunchbox. The office workers heading back there. Oh, here's the other butcher's block. So, in my last video, Warunga, I filmed the butcher's block at Warunga. There's the butcher's block at um, Barangaroo. There you go. Oh, don't worry about stopping for me. Let's go, you know, it's a crossing. But, yeah. Thanks, buddy. people sculling down the Riesling and having some lunch. Yeah. Entrance to Darling Harbour over there. Beautiful. Listen to these people smashing their lunch over here. And their booze. It's 
some residential apartments up the top. Love Fish, this place is called. Packed. Look at them, going to town. Going to town like there's no issues in the world. But you don't blame them for enjoying themselves. These people are smashing some octopus down there. I love octopus. Place called Sama. Got a few people in there. I'll tell you what, it's nice and uh, it's nice and warm in the sun. Be in the um, probably be in the low 20s in the sun, uh, which is nice. Um, that's Celsius by the way. Do the conversion yourself. I can't remember how to convert it. But, um, yeah, quite pleasant for considering it's still winter in Sydney. There's that crazy building there. I love that building. Have a look at that. Looks like something out of like Lost in Space or something. You think that'd be like a, a residence on a, uh, a planet in a sci-fi movie. Now I might just film a little bit of the King Street Wharf, which is we're hitting now. There's Bungalow 8 on the corner there. That's been around since the King Street Wharf was first commercialised into restaurants and cafes. The old Bungalow 8. That'll be, that'll be heaving with people later. We'll go late into the night, hitting the Terps. People enjoying a beer at Henley's Bar and Kitchen. Oh, here's the Meat District co Company. Cheeky steaks and ribs on offer in there. Express lunch, $17, that sign said. It's a tapas bar. People enjoying a bit of tapas action in there. Here's some of the uh, tourist ferries over here. It's a big party boat there called the Starship. And then they've got Sydney Showboat over here. Pretty funny to see a, a showboat on Sydney Harbour. But it's been around for a long time, so it must go all right. It's another party boat there. I filmed King Street Wharf before, so I might sneak up this set of stairs here and get out and try to film something different. Oh, look at that cheeky little wharf hole in the wall cafe there. That's pretty cool. Let's get up here. Get up these stairs. Just tell you what it's getting a bit hot in the sun 
got a sloppy joe on and a, a hat it's starting to sweat I see other people's walking tours over in uh, over in the US um, and they're walking around in, in summer with jackets on and I'm thinking to myself wow and that's their summer this is our winter and I'm sweating walking down the street so some of these people need to come over and experience an Australian summer I tell you what maybe some of the people that live in Texas would know a bit about an Australian summer but um, I don't think many others in the US would know what an Australian summer is really like get over here and get a whole week of 30 degrees Celsius and above every day back to back that'll sort you out and then finish off in the new year around New Year's at like 40 degrees Celsius that'll sort you out here's the back of the tourist uh, zoo over here and there's Sydney Aquarium on the other side as well I'm not going to go past there there's too many tourists around oh look Madame Tussauds there telling us that there's a Justin Bieber statue in there and Greg Inglis famous rugby league player he's in there What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get across this bridge and film a, uh, a famous hotel. Pause on it for a little bit, reminisce. And here we are. We're coming up on the slip in. Now this little tavern here, can you believe it? This is where Prince Frederick and Princess Mary of Denmark met. It was during the Sydney Olympics when there was a lot of hype about. People were going absolutely nuts in Sydney. There is the inside. But I think they actually I think they might have actually met in the beer garden. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go in there if I can if I can. But there's basically a beer garden on the other side of this or through there, through the doors there. And I think they pretty much they pretty much met there. Yeah look there's a Danish flag outside the outside the slip in now. So yeah look this little incognito inn on the corner of Sussex Street and King Street is where the uh, what will be one day the uh, head of state for Denmark and his wife met so there you go slip in so I get onto this pedestrian island over here I'll turn back around and film it again try to do it without the sun yeah. slip in This place here used to be a um, used to be a steak and burger joint. Uh, I can't remember what chain it was, but it's long since gone. It's another place you'd get to on a on a team lunch or dinner back in the uh, the work days. MIT Sydney. Is that the MIT? Having a campus in Sydney? Not too sure. 
Must be someone just using the initials. Time for a restaurant now, Jackalberry. There's a back of the Hyatt Regency in Sydney in Sussex Street. Um, this is Darling Park, this set of buildings here. Uh, it's a Commonwealth Bank. Well, it's branded the Commonwealth Bank building. But I'm pretty sure the Commonwealth Bank is down in down in Darling Harbour now. They're not located here. Let's see if we can cross here. But um, I think Fairfax, which is the publishers of the Sydney Morning Herald and, and other publications like that might be still in this building. Now I've settled on um, industry beans for my nectar today. I cut off down in Sussex Street because the uh, the camera overheated. So here's the industry beans, which is like a uh, it's like being in a laboratory. So I switched the camera back on once my uh, special batch of Rwandan batch brew comes to the table. I've had to cut the sound out here uh, when my Rwandan coffee arrived because um, I put my microphone down too far away from my um, mouth and um, it wasn't picking up the sound. But um, yeah, look, this Rwandan special batch from Industry Beans was absolutely de delicious, so I'd recommend it. And uh, take this opportunity to say... Um, like comment and subscribe hope you enjoyed the vid today and um i'll um stick around here and finish my brew in industry beans the video is over